Many Carolina-bays near rivers show evidence of mud splashes that formed contemporaneously with the bays. Today we will study Kelly Bay in South Carolina. Welcome to another edition of the Carolina Bay of the Day, where we study the secondary impacts made by the glacier ice boulders that were ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet. There is a link to the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth by Michael Davies in the description of the video. Kelly Bay is a large Carolina Bay with a length of 2,440 meters, which is one and a half miles. This bay is covered by two chevron dunes that have been interpreted as being of Aeolian origin, that is, created by the wind. However, Kelly Bay is adjacent to the Little P.D. River and there are well-defined elliptical features along the river bank, suggesting that the incursions into Kelly Bay are splash chevrons and not Aeolian sand dunes. I was curious about the name of the river because it sounded like someone's initials, but the spelling seemed suspiciously like bathroom humor. I was surprised to learn that the Little P.D. River is named after the P.D. Indian tribe, whose population has been historically concentrated in the Piedmont of present-day South Carolina. In the 17th and 18th centuries, English colonists named the river and the region of South Carolina for the tribe. The Little P.D. River is a 116-mile-long tributary of the P.D. River. It originates near Loringburg, North Carolina and flows southward across the South Carolina border. We will use this LiDAR image for our analysis of Kelly Bay. We can fit an ellipse to Kelly Bay by matching the east margin of the bay. Mathematically, only five points are needed to fit an ellipse to an elliptical curve, so we can determine the shape of the bay even though Kelly Bay is partially obscured. This image highlights two Carolina bays that are on the floodplain of the Little P.D. River. It is possible that the impacts that made these two bays on the riverbed splashed some river sediment. The sediment was carried toward Kelly Bay by the force of the impact and by westerly wind. The sandy deposits cover the rim of Kelly Bay. A few seconds later, a small ice projectile with a higher trajectory impacted the splashed chevrons and created a small Carolina Bay on these deposits. This scenario follows the law of superposition. Kelly Bay was in place first. The bays by the river were in place next and created the splash chevrons, and finally a small bay was created on top of the splash chevrons. Kelly Bay is located 1,114 kilometers from Saginaw Bay, which is assumed to be the point from which the ice pieces that made the bays were launched. The bay has a width of 1,486 meters and a length of 2,440 meters. The width to length ratio corresponds to an impact angle of 37.5 degrees. Using realistic equations, we calculate that the impact velocity was 3.36 km per second. The time of flight was 6.96 minutes and the trajectory height was 214 km above the surface of the Earth. The diameter of the glacier ice projectile that made the bay is estimated to be 488 meters. The impact energy was equivalent to 75.2 megatons of TNT, which would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 8.73. The small bay has a width of 198 meters and a length of 255 meters. It was created by a projectile with a diameter of 51 meters, an impact velocity of 3.34 kilometers per second at an angle of 50.9 degrees. Its time of flight was 8.81 minutes. Its trajectory height was 343 kilometers above the surface of the Earth and its impact energy was 84.9 kilotons of TNT, which would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 6.77. Notice the difference of 1.85 minutes in the time of flight. The large bay was created 6.96 minutes after the extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet and the small bay was created 1.85 minutes later. This is 1 minute and 51 seconds. Is it possible for the splash to be created during this time? We can use ballistic equations to answer the question. The point of the splash is 2,170 meters from the bay by the river. Assuming that the splash was launched at a 45 degree angle, we can calculate the launch velocity of the splash material as 146 meters per second and the time to deposit the splash was 21 seconds. So yes, there was plenty of time to deposit the splash chevrons between the time that Kelly Bay was formed and the time that a small projectile made a small bay on top of the splash deposits. The mathematical analysis of this Carolina Bay landscape has shown that all these Carolina Bays and splashes were made in less than two minutes. 
This deduction is possible only because the elliptical geometry of the Carolina base enables us to calculate the impact angles and we can measure the distance to the point from where the ice boulders that made the base were launched. In 2010, Davies and Gilbride calculated the convergence point of the Carolina base and the Nebraska rainwater basins to be Saginaw Bay after taking into consideration the time of flight of the ejecta and the rotation of the Earth. This is presumed to be the location where a meteorite hit the Laurentide ice sheet and ejected the pieces of glacier ice whose secondary impacts made the base. Without the empowerment of mathematics and the laws of physics, we could easily delude ourselves into thinking that Aeolian sand sheets drifted on top of the base for thousands of years. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina base and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. I will continue to examine the Carolina base one bay at a time. My book about the Carolina base is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina base.